So my journey away from violent extremism began 23 years ago uh, when I was 22 years old. Um, but before that, I was this guy, this eighth grader who was about to turn 14, who uh, for 14 years had been bullied, who felt abandoned by my parents, um, who didn't have any friends, uh, and was frankly very lonely and introverted. Um, and I had a hard time. Uh, my parents uh, are Italian immigrants. They moved to, uh, from Italy in the mid-60s, and, and they were often the victims of prejudice when they arrived. Um, but because they were immigrants, they had to work very, very hard. So they managed to open a small business. Uh, and they were gone seven days a week, 14 hours a day, really trying to do the right thing. I mean, I, I, now I don't blame them. But growing up, I kind of wondered, what did I do to push them away? Uh, and I was, certainly wasn't mature or brave enough to, to kind of approach it. Um, so I just got angry, and I got very resentful, and I started to act out uh, pretty badly. And one day when I was 14, this age here, I was standing in an alley and I was smoking a joint. And uh, a man pulled up in a car and he came out and he had a shaved head and he was wearing boots. And the year was 1987. I didn't know what a skinhead was. Nobody really in America knew what a skinhead was at that time. Uh, and he walked up to me, pulled the joint out of my mouth, looked me in the eyes and he said, that's what the communists and the Jews want you to do to keep you docile. I was 14. I didn't know what a communist was. You know, the guy in the, in the Rocky movie, Drago, was really the only Russian that I knew. My favorite movie. Uh, and uh, This is yeah. a deep cut for the post-millennials. Totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't know what a Jewish person was. I went to a Catholic school. I wouldn't have known if I'd come across anybody. Uh, and I didn't even know what the word docile meant. I was literally two weeks before that sitting in my grandparents' closet, you know, drawing pictures and playing with baseball cards. I had no concept of what racism or politics was. Um, but that moment, you know, although it started off as aggressive and kind of scolding me, turned very quickly into him putting his hand on my shoulder and, say, and asking me my name. And I told him, and he recognized it was Italian, and he said, you know, your ancestors are great warriors and thinkers and, and artists, and you should be very proud of that. And I was. I grew up in an Italian family in an Italian neighborhood with other people from the same villages. It was pretty much all I knew. In fact, at that point, I thought if you weren't Italian, you weren't good enough. Like, I thought only Italians were, you know, cool, yeah. uh, because I didn't know anybody else. Um, so you really appeal to the sense of, you know, this making me a hero or promising me paradise. And, uh, but then it would kind of turn into, and there are people that want to take that away from you, and it's you know, the Jews and the communists and uh, the Latinos and the immigrants and everybody else. So it very quickly ramped up, and, and of course I didn't want to seem stupid, and I wanted to belong. It was the first time I'd ever had any acceptance uh, and it did provide a family for me. It provided me with an identity, a community, and a purpose, something that I think is a pretty foundational um, search for all of us at some point in our lives. And, and they did provide that to me before you know, it became very self-destructive. Yeah. So you went from innocent kid, you're, you know, with the... Uh, I went from Chachi? Yep. <laughs> to the next picture, to Nazi almost overnight. I mean, this is maybe 15 and a half, 16 years old. I had sprouted a little bit. I wasn't just a short kid anymore. But um, what this did almost overnight was adopting this look and this rhetoric. Now all the people that had tormented me would avoid me. And suddenly I felt powerful. Of course, it was perceived power. It wasn't real. It, was, it wasn't respect. It was fear. Um, but for a kid who felt powerless his whole life to suddenly experience this power and control, um, I was pretty intoxicated by it.